Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be how to tell when it's over. I've got an email here from a woman who's struggling with a relationship that she's involved in, and it sounds like she's pregnant with the guy's child who she's having trouble with. So I've got a quote I'd like to share before we get into her email. And it says, it takes two people to make a relationship work. When two people get together, they tend to focus on what they like about the other person. Over time, as problems and challenges arise, they tend to focus on what they don't like about the other person. When things go bad, the communication tends to stop and both people start holding back. The purpose of all relationships is that you go there to give. The only way to turn around failing relationships is to get back to giving having fun, making love, and communicating to meet each other's needs. Otherwise, the relationship is sure to end. I was talking with, uh, I had a client that I was talking with today, and he's in a situation where he's trying to save, he's also trying to save a, a relationship that he's involved in, and he has a, a child, I think it was, it was his wife, as a matter of fact, because I, I deal with this a lot. And it's just interesting when you talk to people how their story comes out about what they tell themselves about the situation that they're in. And so as I'm listening to this guy and he's telling me about his situation and what's going on, he's talking from the position of a guy whose relationship is already over and the divorce is definitely going to happen. And so he's showing up, getting together on his dates that he's having with his wife and his child, and he's already in his mind, kind of made up his mind that it's already over and it can't be salvaged. And so as we're talking, he's like, Corey, what do I do? What do you think I should do about this? What do you think I should do about that? And I would tell him, it's like before I even finish the sentence, he's already given me the reason, well, why that's not going to work. I tried that three months ago or four months ago. And I, was like, and I said, the past does not equal the future. I said, with your attitude, I promise you, if you keep up going the way you're going, this, you're, you're definitely 100% guaranteed to get a divorce. You've got to participate in your own rescue. And what I was doing was pointing out not only his own self-talk, but his model of the world and his belief system and how that was hindering him from showing up today because his wife is still giving him a chance to salvage things and repair the bond and the connection that they have. But when he already in his mind is kind of coming from the position of presupposing that it's over and all is lost, he's holding back. He's not doing the things that he knows he should do out of fear that it's over. And if you... If, like you've probably heard me say many times, what you fear, you're going to attract. And what you resist persists and tends to expand. So let's get into this woman's email and go through it. She says, hello, I'm currently in a relationship for almost two years now and I am pregnant also. Me and my partner have been working, have been having problems and by problems I mean that he blames me for them. He always tells me that I am busy pushing him away and the more I continue doing that, he will start caring less and less about me. I just can't seem to get to open up to him emotionally as he is constantly in a mood of some sort. So it's interesting is seeing this from a woman's perspective who's going through a very similar situation like the, the client that I was telling you about earlier. And like you've probably heard me say that women want to feel safe and comfortable in a relationship. And as a man, it's your job to be the leader in the relationship. And as a man, masculine energy is about purpose, drive, mission, succeeding, accomplishing, breaking through barriers. And obviously, if your woman is shut down to you emotionally, you've got to break through that barrier with your strength. It's you showing that you love her, not telling her, but showing that you love her by staying present with her and getting her to open up to you. But obviously if she stays closed down to you, then eventually it's kind of like a plane or a pilot that gets himself into a, a flat spin and then he gets disoriented. What ends up happening is he's already losing altitude and what he does, he tends to pull back on the stick and all that does is cause a stall to become worse and worse until exactly what they fear happening, which is obviously the plane crashes and they end up dying in the crash. That's basically what happened to JFK Jr. I think I don't think he was instrument certified, but he was visual certified and the weather wasn't that great and he got himself into a flat spin and he kept pulling back in the stick and it just 
continued to make the stall even worse. And unfortunately, he lost his life. But the idea is that if you're in one of these situations with a relationship is to is to become aware of what you're feeling inside, what your emotions are, and what your thoughts are, what your self-talk is. is Because if you're thinking positively that you can say this, you can turn things around, the actions that you take are going to be very different than as, oh my God, I don't want this in, I don't want this in, it's probably not going to work out, she's probably going to reject me if I make a move on her. What you fear, you attract, and what you resist tends to expand and becomes bigger. So obviously it takes two and since I'm talking to the woman in this case here, she's really the only one that I have the ability to influence because she's the one that's going to be watching this me read this, this email. So she says, as times goes by, we communicate less and things are so bad that we could be sitting in the same room for five hours and not even say one single word to another. Well, that's definitely not going to help your, your situation and since I'm not talking to the guy I can only talk to you, the woman who wrote this. You've got to be the bigger person. You've got to get him to talk by asking him questions. And you've got to ask him where he's coming from. Because if you just sit there and you wait for him to figure this stuff out, because he's obviously not the one that's reaching out for help and he's not trying to do anything to fix things. It's just going to continue to get worse until the breakup, which you obviously fear, actually happens. You've got to tell him what it is that you want. Tell them how you want things to get back to the way they were and ask them questions like what do you think needs to happen in order for us to do this, in order for us to get back to that place and understand where he's coming from. One of the things that I learned from the documentary Fog of War with Robert McNamara who was the Secretary of Defense back then, 20, 30 years later he got together with all the guys that were the leaders during for North Vietnam, there were his counterparts or his adversary, if you will, to figure out where they went wrong, what they could have d done differently. And one of the things, his life lessons that he learned was, he says, you got to empathize with your enemy. In other words, you got to walk in their shoes and you've got to get to a place where you can literally look through their eyes and see what they see and feel and try to feel what it is that they're feeling because that's the only way that you're going to understand them. And if you pay attention to politics or what's going on in the world, most of the people that are leaders, not only in our country, but all around the world, they have a real problem with that. They have a real problem w trying to walk in the shoes and look through the eyes of the people that they tell us are our supposed enemies when the real problem is, is that they don't even understand our enemies because they've thrown a label on them and they don't even talk to them. They can act like a bunch of fucking high schoolers. Well, that's not going to solve anything. So she says, you know, other than the fact that they're not, they're sitting in a room for, I mean, for five hours not talking, I mean, that's, that's like elementary school type of stuff. It's like you can't fix your relationship acting that way. She says, on top of this, he's become very secretive about things. He lies, he changes his password on his phone, etc. Well, are you going through his phone and accusing him of doing things? I mean, obviously, that's not helping him feel like you trust him. I mean, obviously he's lying, he's devious, and that's a real problem. It's hard to have a healthy relationship with somebody who is a liar. And one of the women I wrote about in my book that I, I really loved and I really cared about, and she had a devious streak to her. And she would lie and deceive me, and that totally destroyed my trust for her and my ability. And so like when I didn't feel like I, I no longer could trust her, I started holding back. I stopped putting my best foot forward because... In my mind, I just couldn't see the relationship working out if she's going to be this way. And at the end of the day, people don't change who they are. They'll become a better version of themselves. But at the end of the day, they are who they are because it's like in, in this particular case, my, my ex-girlfriend, that's just the way she was. She learned this from her parents. That was something that everybody in their family, that's just what they were used to doing. And so my only real choice in that particular case was to put up with the deviousness or get out of the relationship and that's to me is a major red flag if you got some if your boyfriend is being de is deceiving you you can't really fix that i mean that is the way that it is she says he's also been in contact with his ex-girlfriend who he's been in contact with and not so long ago i found messages from her saying how she misses him and he would also reply to the messages saying that he misses her too 
Well, in essence, your boyfriend is blaming you for the breakup because it's obvious that you're holding back. But the same token, he's lying to you, he's deceiving you, and he's talking to his ex-girlfriend. In essence, he's lining up a replacement in case your relation – he's got somebody to go to if your relationship doesn't work out. So in his mind, he's already presupposing that your relationship is going to end. But he's blaming it on you. And you may have heard me say this before. No one will ever do or say anything that isn't a direct reflection of how they feel about themselves in a moment. So in this particular case, he's saying it's all your fault, but in reality, he's just projecting what's inside of him when deep down, he knows at some level that him lying to you and deceiving you and talking to the ex-girlfriend is not doing anything to help the relationship, but he doesn't want to take any responsibility for it. It's what we call cognitive dissonance. It's like we don't want to take responsibility. We don't want to take responsibility that our politicians are lying to us left and right. We want to believe that the people that we elected are going to do the right things. Just like in this particular case, it's like he doesn't want to take any responsibility for the fact that his behavior, his being secretive, his lying to you, is obviously going to cause any would cause anybody to back away and say, "Hey, I can't really trust this person." She says, "I want to be in this relationship, but at times I feel that it's not worth fighting for any longer." Well, it takes two to make a relationship work, and unfortunately, in this case, he's not willing to make an effort. He's already talking to an ex-girlfriend and talking about how much he misses her, but yet he's blaming you for the fact that you're pushing him away. It's like, and I understand where you're coming from. It's like, I've been in that kind of situation with somebody, and that's just, unfortunately, it's something you can't fix. Your, your boyfriend is not going to become, you can't snap your fingers and expect him to become an honest person. And really, the only choice that you have is to accept that he is the way that he is. She says, he would constantly tell me that I am pushing him into the ex-girlfriend's arm. arms. How could this be the truth? I don't know what to do anymore. I need your advice. Well, I mean, the only thing you can really do is have a real honest talk and say, you know what? If you're going to continue talking to your ex-girlfriend and you're going to continue lying to me and deceiving me, then this relationship is definitely going to be over. It's not going to work out. But if you want things to work out between us, if you want me to open up to you, then you've got to show me through your actions and your words that you're willing to make the effort. And you're either going to make the effort or you're not. And obviously if you're not, then the relationship is definitely going to end. And you've got to be completely honest with what you got to understand. If you're talking to a guy, us guys, we tend to be very logic. We're like dogs. I mean, it's like sit, lay down, roll over. You've got to tell – Tell him and communicate to him explicitly what it is that you want to do or what you want would like to see him change as far as the level of effort. You can't – because a lot of women tend to – or most women tend to communicate implicitly by using examples and talking about related type of things, hoping that he'll kind of decipher your examples and understand where you're coming from. If you try to communicate with the average guy that way, he's not going to understand you. He's not going – to get that, of course, unless he's studied the things that I teach or he's learned it from somebody else. So in this particular case, you're going to have to be the better communicator. But the major red flag that I see here is that he's deceiving you and he's lying to you. And I mean, even if things got back, to, you got back together and things became better, you're still in the back of your mind. You're going to doubt him because he's obviously lied to you plenty of times. And it's, that's what I came to realize about my own ex-girlfriend is that as much as I loved her, as great as she was in bed, as much fun as we, we had together, as much as I loved being with her and I enjoyed her family, you just can't fix that. You, that person is just not going to change. When they become fearful or they think things aren't going to work out, they go back to their normal operating system, which is in essence being a pathological liar, if you will. And You can't have a healthy relationship with somebody who's not willing to be honest and authentic with you and unfortunately, that's the way he is. So your only your only option is to communicate with him and if he won't communicate, if he won't make the effort, then unfortunately your relationship is just simply not going to work out. You deserve to be with somebody who will be authentic with you. I will talk to you soon.